Well, we are into February, and I thought it would be a good idea to go over some college basketball teams that right now are on the verge of missing the NCAA tournament because of poor play recently. We're going to take a look at several different teams, take a look at their odds right now here on February 2nd, and then give kind of my thoughts on their future, looking at their schedule and everything like that. So the first team we're looking at, it is Memphis, and oh my goodness, let me, let me just be honest, the analytics win when it comes to Memphis basketball. Memphis was ranked inside of the top 10, but the analytics had them at around number 50, so it's a double whammy. Now that Memphis has lost all these games, the analytics have destroyed them. You can take a look at the bottom right quadrant, the tournament odds, total odds right now, just an 8% chance. This team was ranked... Number 10 in the nation just a few weeks ago, and now they're down to an 8.5% chance. Looking at the schedule, the brutal loss to Rice. That's a quad four home loss. Looking on the far right, you can see their game score of just 19. The last four game scores have been really bad. They've all been losses. You would think they're going to rebound. You get Wichita State at home. Temple is terrible. You get Tulane at home. They're all five-point favorites or better in those games, so they're probably going to win those three games, but it's still an upward climb considering how bad their analytics are. So even if Memphis finishes out maybe splitting their two games with FAU, possibly beating one of North Texas or SMU, even if they finish strong, the analytics are so low, you have to wonder how much does the, does the committee factor that in to them possibly missing the tournament, considering right now they do just have an 8% chance. They still have a record to where you would think it's salvageable. It's not zero, but the four straight losses, the quad four loss, it is going to be a killer when it comes to selection Sunday and possibly them being on the bubble. The next team we're looking at, it is Ohio State. What has happened to Ohio State basketball with Chris Holtman? Oh my goodness. You can see the tournament odds in the bottom right. Six and a half percent chance to make the tournament. This team had a 93 percent chance in the middle of December. It's been another January meltdown. I mean, they're one in six in their last seven games, and I think they're going to keep losing. They have a game tonight. And by the way, another thing that I'm annoyed with, and people may not understand this, but you know, I just like college basketball to be played on a Saturday. Why are these Big Ten games on Friday nights? It just doesn't fit. And I know you could say, well, there's so many games on Saturday already, they should spread it around, give us more things to watch. But, I mean, just look at all of those terrible numbers for Ohio State. Specifically, to be honest, it has been, they've, they've had some bad luck. So if you look at the far right a quadrant, like where it says 12 of 23, 11 of 24, 14 of 27, that's opponent three-point shooting. So, I mean, some of that is them not defending well. Some of that is just other teams hitting shots. And then also Ohio State has not shot the three at well at all themselves. Three of 25, three of 18, eight of 23, five of 21. Uh, but yeah, recently it's been horrible. You look at their next game tonight at Iowa. They normally, they're on like a 17-game road losing streak dating back to the start of 2023. So I'm guessing they're going to lose to Iowa. Iowa always has a good offense. You get Indiana at home and Maryland at home. Both of those games are winnable. You're going to have to win both of them. You're going to have to win pretty much every home game from here on out and take a few road games. At Wisconsin is going to be tough. We saw Wisconsin have a meltdown against Nebraska last night, but on the road, you're probably losing that one. You're sitting nine-point underdogs. Home against Purdue, very likely a loss there, even though it is at home. Uh, at Minnesota, possibly a win. At Michigan State's a loss. They never beat Michigan State on the road. Home against Nebraska, home against Michigan. You have to win those games, obviously. And then you have to beat Rutgers on the road as well if you want to make the tournament. And then possibly win two games in the Big Ten uh, you know, conference tournament. But right now, Ohio State, they are in a dire situation. Next, we do have St. John's. So the analytics do like St. John's a lot. They are a top 25 team, according to them, even after... The recent losses, you can see they're expected to be an 8 seed, so they're possibly going to be in that 8v9 game, and right now they have an 83% chance to make the tournament, possibly an auto qualifier if they win their conference at around 20%, but just taking a look at the numbers recently, they're 1-4 in four in their last five games, they've got a massive home matchup against UConn. I wonder if that game's played at Madison Square Garden 
or not. Maybe it's on campus for them. They need that badly. That would be a big win against UConn, and I think they can beat UConn. They're only they're only two point underdogs against the number one team in the nation. DuPaul at home. DePaul is horrible. They're sitting minus twenty four. So if they can get those wins back to back, you would think they're going to be in amazing shape to make the tournament. It is tough going on the road at Marquette and Providence. Those are not easy games. This could be a thing where what if they lose to UConn, beat DePaul, but then lose those two road games? They're going to be up against it. You get a home game against Seton Hall, very winnable. On the road at Georgetown, that's an easy win. Home against Creighton is a toss-up. On the road against Butler, another toss-up. DePaul, so they face DePaul twice. That's big for St. John's. That's important to remember. That's going to make things easier. And they also faced... Georgetown twice. So this is a very manageable schedule for St. John's. You would think you get four free wins in the second half of the year in February and early March with Georgetown and also DePaul facing them both at home and both on the road. The big issues here being the games against UConn on the road at Marquette, the home game against Creighton on the road at Butler. I think St. John's is in a very good spot, even after the recent losses, to make the tournament based off of that easier schedule there. The next team that's in danger of missing the tournament, how about Gonzaga? Now, Gonzaga is a fringe top 25 team. The West Coast Conference, we know it's very easy, but this year, Gonzaga snapped their streak. I want to say back the last time they weren't ranked in the AP poll was 2016. Take a look at Gonzaga sitting as a round and eight seed. The bottom right corner, 79% chance to make the tournament, so they should be okay. And you can see after that Santa Clara road loss, they've really went on a winning streak. It's not surprising. The only impressive game there, I would say, you know, in terms of, I, I guess, beating San Francisco on the, or I guess San Francisco was at home. Yeah, they won by five, by five points. So it's just a very forgiving con conference. If Gonzaga was in the Big 12, I think they'd probably be a 500 team right now. And it's nothing against Gonzaga. I have a lot of respect for Gonzaga. I just think this is kind of a team that they're probably going to make the tournament because of how bad their conference is. St. Mary's at home. You know, St. Mary's has really rebounded after an early season struggle. They're, they're actually ranked 16 in terms of the analytics. Portland, that's a free win. A random non-conference road game at Kentucky. That's winnable. Kentucky plays terrible defense. We'll see. Kentucky's been dealing with injuries. Loyola Marymount. You would think that should be a win. Pacific sitting minus 31 in that game. On the road at Portland, minus 17 and a half. Home against Santa Clara, minus 15. And then two games that are tough to end the season, but I think Gonzaga should be fine, probably as a six or a seven seed, depending on if they can beat Kentucky on the road. If they do, that might slingshot them up. And those last two games being on the road at San Francisco and at St. Mary's, those are going to kind of make or break them, possibly moving to like a five or a four seed or maybe staying down a little bit lower in terms of that. Uh, next, we are looking at Oklahoma. So this has been the team that I think, believe it or not, might actually miss the tournament. I've thought... I've kind of thought they've been a fraud for a while. You can see they're sitting as a six seed right now, a 96% chance to make the tournament. Overall, their analytics have them as the number 23 team in the nation at this point. And you look at their schedule, they lost to Texas and Texas Tech. They recently beat Kansas State on the road. That's a very impressive win. It earned them a game score of 99. But if you actually look at that, Kansas State was four of 28 from three. You could say, oh, that's great Oklahoma defense. I just think that's a little bit of a, of a fluky game personally. And their future schedule, you do have UCF. UCF is no, they're no pushover, especially on the road. But you would expect, if you are an Oklahoma fan, that's a very winnable game. BYU at home, it's another toss-up. Oklahoma State, that's you're gonna probably going to win that sitting minus 12. On the road at Baylor is tough. Home against Kansas is a toss-up. On the road against Oklahoma State. Their favorites at Iowa State's brutal. Home against Houston is brutal. Home against Cincy is winnable at Texas is going to be tough. So, you know, you can make the argument if they lose a lot of these toss-up games, they may move down significantly in terms of overall seeds. Uh, they lost, you know, ba those back-to-back -back home games that they lost, Texas and Texas Tech, that may come back to bite them. I guess we will see in terms of that. But the Big 12 is just such a gauntlet. And then moving on to the final team, we're going to be taking a look at Cincinnati. Now, Cincinnati, it's actually really unfortunate for them. 
They joined the Big 12 this year. Imagine if they were still in the American. This team would be ranked inside of the top 25. Their analytics have them as the number 42 overall team. Their tournament odds suggest they're going to be in an 8v9 game, possibly 49% chance to make the tournament, basically 50-50. And their future schedule, well, it's brutal. And it's typical, you know, being the Big 12, you go on the road at Texas Tech. They're going to be underdogs. They're hosting Houston sitting, you know, plus 10 in that game versus Iowa State. I think they'll beat Iowa State at home. Iowa State does not play well away from their home arena. On the road at UCF, that's a game you got to win. If you're on the bubble, you got to go into UCF, into Central Florida and win that game. You got to beat Oklahoma State at home. TCU on the road, I think it's winnable, but it's tough. At Houston is brutal. You get Kansas State at home, you got to win that game. Oklahoma on the road, Maybe you could steal that. And then you do get West Virginia, that very winnable. So Oklahoma State at home, West Virginia at home, Kansas State at home. Those are games you have to win, and then you have to be able to... I mean, with with a lot of these conferences, it's just win your home games and then steal one or two road games. For Cincinnati, you got to somehow get... Certainly, you would love to get that home game against Iowa State, considering how bad they are on the road. You beat UCF on the road. It is possible, but it's going to be tough for them to possibly make the tournament. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.